Uh, my name is Valerie Arbizu, and I'm the principal of Aragon High School. Uh, tonight, it's my pleasure to, one, uh, shamelessly promote uh, Mama Mia is uh, opening on Thursday. Uh, my name is Valerie Arbizu, and I'm and the principal of Aragon High School. And you all got to uh, hear my uh, webinar getting started. <laughs> <laughs> on my other screen. Um, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce uh, Margaret, uh, who is with our PTSO, and um, she'll kind of take us into the next step here tonight. Great. Margaret. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Abizu. And um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our PTSO meeting. In today's topic, we're going to be talked about um, summer internship, and we have um, Ms. Queenie and also Ms. Tizak, who would join us from the College and Career Center. By the way, before I hand it over to them, I want to remind everyone, the College and Career Center sends out newsletter that's filled with great information and keep us all updated about college application and career opportunities. Please take a moment to read them whenever you seek, you receive them because you'll find it very, very resourceful. I read, I, I keep my eyes on it and our, our career center and, and, and college center, they spend a lot of time updating the information to the community. So please take some time and read this resourceful newsletter. With that said, I'm gonna introduce Ms. Queenie who is our career advisor. Um, she's gonna be, uh, well, she's recently joined us, but she has an extensive amount of knowledge in the field and we welcome her aboard. I have the luxury of meeting her. She is such a wonderful lady. Now, I'm gonna hand, a, hand the microphone over to Miss Queenie and have her introduce her, te her team. Take it away. Oh. Well, thank you, Margaret. Um, I'm, am I able to uh, share my screen um, to present the slide deck? All right. So once I get the permission, I will do that. Let me know when when it's ready. Oh, by the way, we also have a interpreter here in the room in case we forgot to mention that to anyone. Thank you, Gabrielle, in advance for your help tonight. That's right. You should be able to, to share. All right. Yeah. Let me see. One other thing as we're going through the presentation, as Queenie is getting that set up, um, any questions that uh, our viewers may have, you are welcome to use that Q&A uh, button down at the bottom. I'll be monitoring that this evening and answering questions as we go uh, with as much information as I can. And then anything that uh, that we need to share um, with the full group, we will pose the questions to Queenie and to Miss Lori Tizak um, as we go through. Okay. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I would like to introduce my team. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for PTSO for giving us the opportunity to, to present this, um, to make the, do this presentation on uh, internship, job, and opportunity. So first of all, my name is Queenie Hua. I am the new career coordinator at Aragon. My main role um, as the career uh, and CTE coordinator is to support the teachers and students in the CTE pathway and the outside of classroom and also to work with the student to aim in the develop development of the important skill set that are necessary to build a solid foundation to a career path and help guide them in determining their interests and their ability. But my hope, my dream is actually to be able to inspire them and encourage the long-term growth as a student and as a young adult. So um, just real quick, and I want to introduce um, my team as well. Um, for me, I, for the past 25 years, you know, I've worked in the um, education and private sector. Um, I've um, joined Aragon um, uh, this year in August. And prior to that, um, past 10 years, I've spent my time in the San Mateo Fossa City District. And previously, um, I have various um, roles in the financial service industry, including, you know, worked at uh, Goldman Sachs, Excel Partners, and Dodge and & Cox, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. And I went to school at uh, UC Berkeley. I graduated from the uh, undergrad hall school of business. 
Um, next, I want to move on to, and um, just to, that's just a little bit about myself to um, let you know my background. Our team here at Garagon is, uh, we are the College and Career Center team. We work very closely together. We have the honor tonight of having Ms. Ms. Tisak here. She is the career, uh, she's the college advisor. Our team also has Ms. Milano, who is the financial aid and scholarship advisor. And myself is, um, I'm the CTE and career coordinator. I would love for Ms. Tisak to spend time, a um, little time about, about, tell us about her background and her experience. Thank you, Ms. Tisak. I have, um, thank you, Queenie. I have been with Aragon for 30 years. I um, started out as the scholarship advisor, uh, scholarship and financial aid advisor and worked in that for 10 years um, and then uh, moved over to uh, college and career advisor. Uh, my three children graduated. I myself graduated from Aragon and my three children graduated from Aragon. So I have a long history with Aragon. And, um, you know, I just, I love meeting with your, um, with our students. Um, this past few months, I've been meeting with um, a lot of your seniors and talking to your seniors and emailing with them and just um, giving them support and letting them know that there, um, there is someone there for them to assist them and help them through the, their um, path of uh, moving on to their next path after they graduate from high school. And um, I also love working with your uh, juniors, sophomores and freshmen. I also, I um, am the uh, person that they go to for a work permit. So whether they are having a, getting a job, working or even some internships ask for work permit, they um, would come to me and I will make sure they get their work permit. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tizak, are you also the counselor for students to go to for letter of recommendation? Uh, well, yeah, the students meet me. Um, they usually have a meeting with me before uh, they go to, they uh, move on to see the counselor about the letter of recommendation. And we kind of um, schedule and place them with the counselor that they're going to have write their letter. And I just try to make sure that they get all of their, um, you know, we have all of their documents or uh, the um, applications that they are planning to use um, that we're all straight with that and that they kind of know what they're doing. And then I also um, make sure that in Naviance, they are all matched and um, they're, uh, they have to waive their, um, their, they call them their rights, but they're, they're not their rights. They waive that we, we will, we can send the letter and that we can send those documents like the transcript to the schools. Um, so we just make sure they're all organized and ready to go and that their um, letter of rec can be written by their counselor. And uh, this year has just been really pretty smooth. And we are, the counselors are, and the principal, Ms. Arbizu, uh, are writing, they're writing a really good amount of letters this year. So we have, this is a, a very, um, this class is, it's going to go places. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Tisek. Uh, Ms. Tisek, it's, it, she is wonderful. As she said, 30 something years, you know, with, with a school district. It's, and she's re really wonderful and very helpful. So I feel very lucky to be able to be working with Ms. Tisek. And we, the college and the career center, we are located at the counseling center. All three of us is in one section and we, we, we work very closely together. So um, if, you, if the student wants to reach out and stop by, they're welcome to do that anytime. So um, we're gonna go ahead and, and start. Um, so why are we talking? Why are we meeting tonight and talk about internship jobs and opportunity? And you know, although you know, meeting high academic standard is probably the most important thing in maybe in some parents' mind and with student mind, but being a college student and a young adult, you know, no matter whether you decide to go to, uh, after you go after high school, also it calls for independent responsibility and maturity. And how are you gonna develop that? And that will be where all the internship, the volunteering opportunity and job opportunity comes in as a high school student. And when it comes to uh, internship, job and um, volunteer opportunity, a lot of time, you know, you may think, oh, we just started high school, maybe, maybe you can wait till uh, junior year and senior year, but it's never too early to introduce the concept and to get them you know, involved and start thinking about it. 
So uh, just a little bit uh, about Aragon background. Currently this year, 2022 uh, to 2023, we have um, 1,746 currently enrolled. Um, and oh, just, you know, um, anytime, um, if you wanted to have question and, and feel free to interrupt me, um, Margaret and also Ms. Abisu, okay. Um, so a little bit to assist it is that um, this is something that, you know, I weren't aware when I first started Aragon as well. About 50% of current graduating seniors is going to plan to attend a four years college, but about 20-ish percent, they will plan to attend a community college and about 20% about either going to enter directly into workforce, they could be taking a gap year, or they can be explore other options like military, army, and Navy. So if you look at the whole population of Aragon currently, we are serving you know, uh, this by range of student. So we got a plan opportunity and have been, you know, have the of, of opportunity available to them in our aspect from people wanting to attend a four year of college, community college, or maybe directly going into the workforce. So internship. So internships are a great way to learn about different careers, as well as getting experience that you can include on your own resume and college application. And what is an internship? An internship is a short term, emphasize short term, that allows the worker in turn to gain introductory experience in a certain profession. And as an intern, you work for a company or organization in a role that gain hands-on and practical experience that you can use for the future. So again, you are there to learn. You're not, not there just to take on a job where you come with experience and expect that you being thrown in the role and expect that you know exactly what to do. So there's a difference between career or employment versus an internship. So what do you do in an internship? So the duties and responsibilities during an internship will depend a lot of where, a lot where you work. You may be calling prospective clients for a business, conducting a research material, experimental uh, experiment in a lab, guiding tours at, a gar at art gallery if you're working in a museum or many other options. If you are interning in a, let's say trades related, you know, maybe a auto mechanic shop, then you would be learning directly, you know, kind of like a, um, a mentorship program or work directly and gain hands-on experience, you know, from a, maybe a mechanic. If you're working in a office setting, you may be doing data entry, you may be making copies, but there will be, you know, a advisor and mentor probably be guiding you to for you to learn val valuable experience. So why, why an internship? So it allows students to broaden their horizon as to what kind of career they're out there. Um, as a student, as a ninth grade student, tenth grade, you know, or even junior, you may have never worked a day in your life. And where do you start? And you know. I, I'll share a little bit more about you know, my, my experience with some of the meeting, the students I have met this past few months. But um, so again, why internship? You learn new skills, you learn about yourself, explore what you like and what you don't like, discover other job opportunities, gain valuable experience and increase marketability so that you can put experience on your resume. Get experience and in, uh, get experience in an area of interest and find out area that you like or you do not like. It's very important. It's not just what you like. It's find out what you don't like so you can find a passion, you know, of you know career path that you can explore. Provide you with the firsthand experience in the real working world. That's really really important. And learn how to apply the knowledge that you can acquire and hopefully apply to future jobs and opportunity and learn how a professional workplace operates and, act and actually get feedback. And it's funny that about getting feedback is that I've attended a uh, presentation by one of the Stanford commissioned recently, actually before pandemic. And it's surprisingly, you know, for the past 10 years or so, things have changed a lot where in the old days, you know, when, when student apply to university, university a college, they, they do their own application, they 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 get into whatever college they get you know they they accept it and they sign up for their classes but for some reason the last 
10 years or so, there's an interesting shift where the admissions um, colleges um, realize that a lot of the students who enter first year as a freshman in a university, and somehow the parents are trying to sign up classes on their behalf, and they have never really experienced um, getting really real feedback or, and, and the after four years of college and getting a real job. And when they get the first evaluation and they are getting, they get a lot of criticism, they don't know how to handle it. And so that is something that is important for students to learn of, of you know, getting feedback and getting evaluated. And that is something that they can, can gain experience early on by volunteering and you know, um, getting uh, an internship. Okay, so there are all kinds of internship. Okay, um, there's part time, there's full time, and but majority of the internship, as I mentioned earlier, is um, they're short term, but they're part time and full time, and they're paid. And there's also there's non paid internship. It takes all you know during um, the school year. It could be during summer, and lasts anywhere from a week to a year. And they are for people with little, no experience. And that's the reason why they go in um, to, to gain the experience in internship in their particular career field. And most in turn are high school, college, and recent college grad. It is in some way a little, majority of internship, established internships out there are for uh, undergraduate and for graduate. But I mentioned to this, my student is that there is no need to be discouraged. Sorry. I'm Make sure that this is okay. Um, don't to be discouraged um, if you are a high school student, because there are many other options in creative ways, which we can talk about. It's you know, even if you're a high school student, you can still get the chance to get an internship. So let's see. okay. The general internship criteria. Um, the experience should be an extension of the classroom. It's something that you know that you you learn not not related to subject matters you learn at school, and the skill that you learn must be transferable to other employment settings. So um, that would you know you could be getting an, an internship experience in a hospital. But in a hospital setting, you know, that could be related to the medical field. It could be related to nursing. It could be within a hospital, you can be working in the accounting department or in the marketing department. So some of these skills that you learn would be able to transfer in other companies that you're working in the future. And the experience has a defined beginning and the end. It's, it's not, I mean, it's an internship. So you should know when to start and when to end. And there are clear defined learning objectives and goal related to, you know, um, to the professional goal of a student, um, academic coursework. And also um, that should be a supervisor or a mentor where they would be able to routinely guide you and provide feedback so you know how you're doing. And if you have questions, you know, you can know where to go. Unlike an employment, you know, a regular um, uh, employment opportunity, you may come in with experience and then you follow your, your job description you come in, you expect it to you know, know exactly what you do in certain duties and responsibility. But an internship, they do not expect it. They expect to, to guide you and provide feedback and provide resources so you can learn. And there are resources provided by the host employer that support you know, learning objective. Okay, so that's very important. That's a, dif that's a difference between internship and an employment. So now gets into where can you find a high school internship? And, and as I mentioned, you know, it is um, the more established internship is read, more read, readily available for graduate students or undergrad. So for high school, um, for our school at Aragon, Aragon has a program in place to help students find internship, employment, and volunteer position. Um, one thing, I mean, my um, past two years, there isn't uh, a career coordinator role, and my predecessors also may have done things differently. Um, for our for our college and career um, center, we have a monthly newsletter letter that we send out and is posted on a website. Mainly, there's a lot of information, you know, especially this time about AP tests, um, about um, the college uh, application, about financial aid, 
all the information Ms. Tisek uh, and Ms. Mahala has done a wonderful job in sharing that on a monthly basis. And then for, since I started, I also added my career um, section in that same newsletter and being posted on a website on a monthly basis. We have a monthly, monthly newsletter. Um, for the career piece, um, I mentioned about my school um, under our website and also um, I've shared it with, this with all, my, uh, all the students. Um, other school may have done it differently and I'm trying it out because I'm new. And I, at the very beginning, I send out a welcome email and, and I welcome feedback from both parent and student. I understand parents are very busy and they may not necessarily you know, want to get all the emails. So I did, you know, has a disclaimer when I first sent out the first one is that I wanted to at least let the school, both student and parent know there's resources um, at the career center. Um, we have the, uh, uh, a career opportunity uh, slide deck that we share. It's being updated by me and my team, which is the career coordinated team of all the high school within our district. I, I have um, my counterpart I work with in other high school within the district. And this slide deck is being updated on a weekly basis, actually daily basis. Whenever we, we, we come across a good opportunity that is um, appropriate and encouraging uh, for our student, we would share that and we, we post that. So whenever students send me an email, I always include that in the bottom line email for them to know. And I share that as email, I send it through uh, Canvas to let um, the parents know as well um, about maybe either once a month or once every two months, I created a career um, uh, success, a uh, career opportunity success um, newsletter on my own that's under just uh, career related uh, topics and highlight some of the um, uh, internship jobs and volunteering opportunity. And the reason I did that, and, um, and I, I, will, I will ask the you know, parent and also student for feedback. Originally, I was gonna send it just for the, uh, the student for the upper grade. Then I, when I thought about it, when I sent it, I said, well, why just upper grade? Why not include a 10th, 9th grade and 10th grade and let them know that there is such resources and it's, it doesn't hurt for them to start early. Then I thought about it and I talked to um, when I, you know, a student a parent uh, contact me and, and said, oh, I would love to get a copy of that. So I ended up copying the parent. I hope that it's not too overwhelming because, you know, I understand that, you know, um, mainly I want to communicate that to the student and um, but I want them to be proactive and to, into looking into this, not having this fall on the parent's shoulder and, 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 and have the Parents tell them, well, you should be looking at this or you should be looking in the you know, internship or uh, job opportunities. But um, just as an FYI, I want parents to know what's out there. And maybe if the student had advice, they can share that with the parent to look at. So that's one resource from our school, from Aragon. So other places that you, could, uh, you would um, be able to, to look for internship is that ask directly at the company or organization where you would like to be interned and create a resume and be ready to talk about yourself, your interests, and what you'd like to learn at the internship. If the company organization does not have an internship, it does not hurt to ask. This is about networking. In high school, as I mentioned, they not, may not be have established internship. An example I can give you is that, you know, recently we went to two organizations, Gilead Headquarter, which is a biotech biology and chemistry uh, uh, company in uh, headquarter in Foster City. We had over about 100, 100 students from our district who attended because we have a biotech pathway in three high school within our district. And after the internship, you know, we all find out, well, they actually do not have high school level, but it doesn't stop us, you know, to ask. And then um, following that, you know, we got the opportunity to meet the senior scientists. And now we're in a conversation um, meeting with uh, the Gilead team and also our biotech uh, teaching team within our district to actually move forward to hopefully create a community partnership with Gilead. And it's something in, in the talk, and we don't know whether it's successful, but as career coordinator, just like the student, it does not hurt to ask. That's the one thing about networking and about you know, being able to speak up and ask for what you hope you, know, you could get. So that's one thing. Another is Franklin Templeton, who recently took another 50 student to uh, a, a job sharing event. Again, we find out you know, they do not offer uh, high school level, summer internship, majority of the internship they offer, it's from um, college level and also graduate level. But again, I, we did the same thing. I did the same thing, I'm following with them. You know, I don't take no for an answer that easily. 
just ask, okay? And um, last thing, in internet search. A simple Google search, you know, you know, will be an easy way to start looking for, you know, you may, you may be interested in, let's say, nursing, and you don't know what's out there, and you search, you know, under the area, you'll be surprised what you may be able to find. So that's one way. But I would say start from the school, and a lot of time you may have friends, you may have aunt, you may have parent who happen to know someone who maybe, you know, is a Stanford professor, and maybe, you know, working in, if you're interested in trades, may own a auto mechanic shop. And, you know, your uncle, your relatives, or your friends, you know, parent may be able to connect you. So that's one thing of learning about networking and also learning how to communicate. So what are some of the factors that we are evaluating in the internship opportunity? So as a public high school, I have to say, um, you know, we do not, you know, we, we do not, um, in, in the position to provide, you know, advice on guidance of how to, you know, how the local company can set up a non-pay or pay internship. It would be up to, you know, each company's, you know, their own legal department, the HR department, the compliance department to follow the federal and state. I mean, their internship, I mean, they have rules and regulation that the company needs to follow, you know, and um, to follow, to come up with their own summer internship guidelines if they were going to host one. And each company may also have different risk and liability and tolerance level. So because of that, you know, some non-pay internship, you know, may need a permit, some may not. So it, it depends on how the company is structuring them. So it is unfortunate, I mean, we, we're not in a position to advise, but, um, the, you know, the summer, uh, summer to internship offerings are evaluated, you know, on a case by case basis. An internship offered by well-established company, you know, for us, we are very supportive as a school and we would like to promote them. And some students do seek out internship opportunity, as I mentioned earlier, independently, like labs, you know, talking with scientists, you know, other, you know, involvement. Uh, but in general, in those situations, we do encourage students to seek out opportunity with well-established, reputable organization. So what do we do as career coordinator to kind of, you know, how do we post some of our uh, information on our slide deck? So a few things that we look into is that, is there a reputable company organization that we may have worked with before? So some of the things that we recognize would be job for youth, you know, uh, junior achievements, you know, some that, you know, we have worked for many, many years. And um, it is um, Boys and Girls Club, there's also other, you know, local city county uh, organization that we have worked with before. Um, so those those are things that we look into is whether they are uh, reputable, well established. Have we worked with them before? Is it an internship of? Uh, is will the student benefit from the internship? Are the student being supervised during working hours? You know, um, it's is it being offered equally? Uh, equal opportunity. Is there going to be a cost involved? We need to know that. I mean, if, it, if, if they charge students to do an internship, I mean, that there may be internship out there. They are. Um, but then is this something you want to ad advertise to our student? I mean, parents are welcome to kind of look elsewhere if they're interested in paid internship. Um, but those are some of the factors, you know, we consider when we are vending, vending through, you know, the uh, information we receive on a daily basis to determine whether we want to share what is appropriate to share with a student. Okay, so job and volunteering. So a job is a paid position, a little bit different from an internship, of regular employment, full-time or part-time. So volunteering, it's something that you use your own time and you know, willingly given for common good and without financial gain. So that's you know, the difference between the two. So um, if parents are interested in creating an internship, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, I've asked that question, you know, recently and wish we can be in a position to, you know, to provide advice, but we are not. But hopefully the information I just share will guide you to the, you know, give you a little bit sense and direction of how to approach um, a company um, and also, you know, to basically evaluate yourself, whether it's a legitimate internship. But there's some information on here if you want to look into uh, from the labor department um, for the California work experience um, that you can kind of look at the guidelines. Okay, what's the benefit of working volunteering internship? Very simple, a few things that, you know, probably common sense about learning new skills, 
a sense of identity, learn about yourself, networking, intellectual challenging, meet new people, and discover other job opportunity, getting an experience. Sorry. In the area of interest, you know, having a work-life balance, access to community, understand the world a little better, the sense of meaning and purpose, allowing students to see not all interesting career require a career degree. The last point is very important. And a lot of the common theme here, it's about learning new skills and learning yourself and communication and networking. All that, if you have no prior experience, having an internship, the opportunity of internship to kind of get a sense to learn how to work with people, how to work in a team setting, how to work in a office environment, um, find out what, whether you're interested in the intern subject that you're working on, is a very, very valuable experience for student, you know, as a high school student. So um, again, where can I look for a job and volunteer program? So these are the, some of the resources that we share with you and you're welcome to look at our website. Our website, um, again, um, the slide deck I provided, not only include work, uh, employment and work opportunity, it include volunteering opportunity and also uh, internship opportunity. Okay, this is one of the, the uh, information I posted in last month um, newsletter, the Career uh, for Success newsletter. And this is a, a scan, a QR code. That is something that you know, your student can always refer back to to get information. Um, I wanna give some example of what to look for when you actually on the slide deck on our website. This, I have included a few, but there are many more. So this is just, I, I want you to walk you through like some, how do you, what do you look for? If your student have questions, like how do I signed up? So this is a good um, example of a pay internship. As you notice, it is not the date, it's actually November 21st. We are posting this in advance to let students know it's coming up, but it's actually start in a few days. And it, went through, it runs through December 23rd. This is the period that they could apply. So this an internship is actually a pay. Again, it has six week pay. So it is a time frame, a beginning and an end. It has, it's a pay internship. They mentioned it with a price per hour. Okay, and what is it designed for? Um, relate, it's a unique relationship with supervising mentor. They mentioned about relationship of a mentor, a supervisor. That's important that we know that someone will be guiding them. It gives you a date when to apply. It tells you about networking opportunity with peers and senior leaders through work-based activity, community service project, and social event. So this includes all the information. Um, and it mentioned it, it is an internship. It gives you a, um, a contact. Um, it is related to um, the healthcare. So this is, this is a good example of a paid internship um, flyer or information um, that they're providing. So a second one, you may not be to see the detail. This is an art internship. It tells you what do they do. It tells you who is eligible. It tells you what grade you can apply. So, and then it tells you, you know, what subject, you know, for students who are interested in art. And you can, it tells you the time frame. So that would be a good, you know, sample. If they don't have, if they don't provide much detail, you may kind of want to question it. And also in this slide deck, I wanted, other than just internship, I wanted to, Sometimes you may not be able to find in internship. You have to kind of think outside the box to create opportunity to, to, you know, to look in the area of your interests. So for this one, it's leadership development program. It is for ninth grader to 11th grader and it's happened in the curiosity and it has a date, it has a contact, it tells you what to do. It tells you a leadership development program that runs through the year. So it's a STEM program. So it gives you the subject um, it tells you what they're doing, get hands-on volunteer experience, and you meet local STEM professional. It developed your public speaking skills and meet, you know, uh, virtually and in person. It tells you the information. So when you look for internship, you want to make sure that period, there's mentor, you learn from experience. Um, it's related to the subject area that you're interested in. So those are some of the information that you look for. Today, I, I brought this in this, this slide deck in because 
I actually met with a student today. So she wanted an internship in nursing directly related to this line deck. So, but right now there isn't one just ready available for her to do next week. So what does she do? I mentioned to her a lot of time is about networking. This particular um, is about a learning about career in, in nursing. It is, a, it is a kind of information section you can register, it's free. And uh, we usually offer uh, internship and also, um, uh, or this kind of information seminar during non-school time. If it's in class time, we try not to post it because students can attend anyway. So we do look at all sorts of information and we work as a team to gather the information to share with our student. So I mentioned to her that you, she is actually a, um, uh, the student I talked to today, she's a senior. She has many other job kind of, you know, work in different, uh, maybe in, in sales, in, in restaurant, but she really wanted a, a, a volunteer opportunity in the uh, medical in nursing area. So how I guide her is that, well, you got to think outside the box. First of all, she's not familiar what, what nursing is, is about. So I told her by attending this kind of seminar, you can ask questions. You first of all, the more you hear about it, the lingo, the, the lingo that you hear, um, the you more you learn. I, I told her that the nursing is one of the industry or a, a major that's very impacted. And recently, I personally have learned that some of the students actually are looking for out of state nursing program because it is less expensive and they can be able to get the classes they want faster uh, outside of state, maybe in Vegas or somewhere. And she said, wow, I have no idea. How do I find out? We as a school, we may not have the specialties in, in medical, we may not have specialties in nursing, but we, I, I told her that if you attend this seminar, you may be able to ask and find out more questions uh, uh, you know, to find answers yourself. So that's one way is to think outside the box. And then um, this Samaritan House, a lot of us have heard of it, very local, is, an, is a volunteer opportunity. It's, I know it is not an internship, but you never know. If you don't, if you are, if you're not ready to, to, you know, to do an internship or, you know, you're still searching, consider volunteering. That's how you network. That's how you develop yourself, how to learn how to communicate and, and work with people. So you can start with, you know, organization like Samantha House where it's very local. You can walk there because a lot of students, they come to me and said, Ms. Queenie, we, I, I want to get a job, but I, I don't drive. What do I do? So you find ways to um, find um, organization or um, places where you would be able, able to kind of arrange transportation um, so that it works for you. So try not to limit yourself. Um, this is a Lockheed Martin internship. Um, we don't have all the information. We post it in, best, in advance to let students know that it will be coming. But as you, as you can see here, it's, it's a re very reputable uh, company. It's STEM related. They have, you know, internship opportunity in all areas. So again, you know, we have many resources that we hope the student would be able to find time and kind of go through it themselves. So some tips um, about internships. So to sum up what I said earlier, so, there, 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 are many, there are many steps that the student have to, but how do you find it, how do, what, what do you do to find a, to do, to do, to do a, a successful internship search? You got to be prepared, you do, you do your research, you got to have your resume ready. You need to be able to apply. So apply is either online or in person, but make sure that you follow through, you look for your email, um, make sure that you have a, a email address dot it's not like over the rainbow.com, whatever gmail.com, because students came to me and you know they they we uh, actually just last week, actually, student, um, one of the students applying for their first job, he was very, very nervous and um, he received an email back and didn't know what to how to respond. So we sat down together, we actually wrote the response together. Um, and you know, he shared his email address, and I said that's something for the next job you apply you may want to consider is to change your email address because he has something that is, you know, the person, the, the employee will have no idea that was him. So that's one tip that, you know, I, I would advise students to do. So um, learn to be a good communicator. Communicator is very important. Um, as you know, 
an example is that no matter how well your resume look, but when it comes to a real internship, um, you will need to ace the, the interview in order to, to get the job. So learning how to communicate, learn how to present yourself. And don't be afraid to explore your interests by taking different classes, joining different clubs, and taking you know, volunteer opportunity in this different area that's outside your comfort, comfort zone so that you can explore what you like and what you don't like. Keep the doors open. Keep your options open. And don't worry that if you don't know what you want to major in at this point, because you know, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. You know, I, I went to UC Berkeley, you know, just kept my GPA up, up high the first year, second year. Then I decided I wanted to go in business. And that's the third year when I can apply for a business school. So you just have to explore what you like and what you don't like in order to find out. Study what you love and intern what you want to do. And it's okay to pivot as many times as you need. If you look at a lot of successful um, um, people, they have you know, made many left turn, many right turn beside, before they decided you know, what their passion is. And, and I'm one of them. <laughs> Choose a job that you love. And you will never have to work a day in your life. We have, we have heard that many, many times. And I think that, you know, that is a very, very important um, advice. So I would say a lot of students may think that, you know, high school course load is very busy. And it is almost impossible to find time to do other extracurricular activity or even find an internship or find a job. However, they may underestimate the power and the benefit of learning how to balance and change load in high school. And with extra, you know, all these extra funding is actually introduced, you know, to the type of business schedule you will face in college and in workforce. You will learn how to juggle a busy work schedule, volunteer. You, you don't know how much it will prepare you for college and for the real world. And along the way, when you're exploring yourself, you know, of those opportunities, you can also learn how to better to manage your time, learn about your limits, learn how to communicate with the adult, and most importantly, you to discover your interest and passion along the way. So remember, I just want to set, you know, leave you guys with the message is that in high school, it's time for both personal and academic growth. And you need to focus on enjoying, you know, asking the student to enjoy their life as a high school student. Make sure that they're curious, try new things, keep it fresh, be passionate, and look for internship that, you know, they're interested in. Look for volunteer opportunity that they're interested in to explore so they can, you know, find out what they like and what they don't like. I would at this time love for Ms. Tisak to share um, some of her thoughts because, you know, she is very experienced in working with a student, I would love to hear what she would like to share with us as well. Lori, you're on mute. It's okay. Of course, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to the dog. The dog's listening to me. <laughs> um, I would clearly say, yes, do your research. And, um, you know, as um, Ms. Queenie said, if you're doing something you're lo you love, and you're passionate about, um, it's not like work at all. So um, definitely research and um, don't be afraid to go out as she said and network and talk to people and ask questions. And don't be afraid to change your mind. I think that's the other little nugget, right? And I think, I think Queenie was mentioning that. I think we've all done a little bit of that over the course of, of our lives and careers and um, have landed in places that make us really happy. Exactly. Um, I yeah. was joking with my student. It took me 25 years for me to figure out, you know, where my, what my passion is. And as if you take you just less than that, you're more successful than I am. <laughs> And you may do some, you may do an internship or a job or whatever you do and find out it's not what you like, you know? So as Ms. Arbizu said, being able to change your mind and be open. Yeah. So great. any questions? No, we, uh, I think, I think if this has been a very informative seminar. Uh, you organized it really well, Queenie. Um, and there are no questions. Well, I encourage for now. Students. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I really do encourage a student. I mean, a lot of time, 
um, I, I, I noticed students are nervous. And, and, I, and that's why the reason why is I know there are a lot of new ninth grader coming in and they may not, we, our job, does, our school does a really good job in you know, making the ninth grader feel welcome. I mean, I feel that way. Um, but a lot of time, they don't even know what resources is available. That's why when it comes to, you know, um, career internship and job opportunity, they may not think about it so soon. They say, oh, no, I'm only a, a new freshman. Um, and some of the, and, and today, one of the students, a good example, is coming to me at 12th grade. And, um, and they, they may not, they, they feel nervous about approaching an employer. And one of the students got an email back from an employer, employer and didn't know what to do with it. So it's, it's just gaining experience. And a lot of time, you know, the student may say, well, I may not never want to work in a food service industry. Why would I my, want my first job to be maybe working in a McDonald's or a Chipotle? Some of them, you know, they personally do like the food service industry. But some of them, it said, well, right now, um, I, I, I want to be a lawyer. But it's as, as a ninth grade or as a high school student, you, you won't be able to go directly and find a law internship. So what do you do? You think outside the box. And you find, um, you know, other opportunity that could be related or your, your experience as a, let's say, working in Chipotle is valuable because you learn how to work with people, how to communicate. Everyone has to start somewhere. I started off working as a bookstore when I, that was my first job. I, I, I wasn't interested in sales. I wasn't interested in being a librarian or anything, but everybody has to start somewhere. So um, any, any um, question from, from, from the parent or I don't know whether any student here? Margaret, are you? I think Margaret had to step out. Um, and I think, I think we've done a really solid job um, and given our, our audience a lot to think about. And I have no doubt they know where to go to get answers um, if they have questions. So they might, you know, click off of this for right now. And then, you know, at some point this evening or tomorrow or a week or two weeks from now, they'll get in touch. Okay. Do yeah. encourage the student to come to the career center and to, to, to find us to say hello. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I do, and Ms. TSEC does the same thing for me, every single student I meet about, they, they come and stop and say hi and tell me what they like. I have their contact, I have their interest. So whenever I have something comes up, I usually go through my, the, my notes and then I would actually email them opportunity. They mention that they're interested. And so it's, it, you know, I, a lot of time, you know, uh, I mentioned about going out there and network. If you think about it this way, me, me as a parent, me as a, a teacher, me as a, a career coordinator, or me used to as a professional, we like to help students who like to help themselves. The profession, professional out there, if you show that you are eager, they would be happy to help you. But you got to ask the question. You got to you got to be there. They, they 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 won't come to you. You have to go to them and just know that if you do, they want to help people who want to help themselves. And that's very true. So we do have a question um, and, and it's one it's popped up a couple of times. So instead of my typing the answer several times, um, the question is, uh, will the recording be available for students to watch? Um, so the, the, the idea here being that the information here is so useful to our students, uh, that it, it sometimes can be better for kids to hear it directly from our, from you, Queenie and from Lori, um, rather than just hearing it from their parents. And the answer is yes. So this is streaming, uh, live to our YouTube channel. Um, and it, that's where it will live. So you can actually find the link to it there now. Um, and then it will just live there for a long time because <laughs> it's good info. Yeah, one last thing, you know, I want you, I mean, a lot of parents are here watching tonight. I, I want you to know your student, your child, it's smarter than you think, more capable than you think. And, you know, they're, they're more knowledgeable and, you know, than you think. So don't underestimate them. Um, don't do the work for them. Let them, let them, you know, come to us ask question that that's about learning communicating as well um don't don't no need to always involve the parent but but push them a little bit you know saying well you know take a look 
go to check on the newsletter, go to the career center, look for Miss Tset, look for Miss Queenie. And, and that way, you know, they, they, they build up the confidence and they'd be more brave um, when it comes to real, you know, uh, interview opportunity. And they, they are used to talking to adults. That's very important. So there's just, another question that just popped up. Sorry, Margaret. <laughs> um, okay. The question is, what's the best way for a student to reach out? Email for an appointment, drop by the office, uh, all of the above. All like of the above. Okay. I, I told my student that, you know, sometimes they say, well, what is a good time? Yeah. My door is o- always open. And Ms. Tisak is always, I think, you know, she feels the same way. Um, we have uh, break time. We have lunch time. Sometimes students are shy. And, um, and they, they started with email, but I encourage them, yes, I want, I want to actually meet you. So I want them to come, even though they have nothing to, to want to know, I want them to pop in just to say hello. That's how we establish the relationship. You know, it may be just a ninth grader who want not, nothing to do with jobs, but, you know, I want them just to introduce themselves and say, hi, my name is, and my, my, I, I could be down the road wanted to, to talk to you, but, you know, it, it's, it's the first step. Right. And for me, I I will take walk-ins, but if they email me, I will send them back my appointment calendar, calendar and they can make an appointment with me. Um, I could attest to what Ms. Queenie and Ms. What Ms. Tiza have said earlier about them welcoming students. It was just like early this week, I was talking with, with Ms. Queenie about my junior who, who was doing some work over the summer. And while we were talking, Miss Queenie was like, hmm, that sounds familiar. Was it XXX, yeah. your daughter? I was like, yeah, that's her. <laughs> I had my notes and I said, I know exactly what you're talking about. I didn't know that it was Margaret's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't aware that my daughter actually came to the career center to talk to Miss Queenie. And it happens that they, they actually do things on their own. It was just all we need to do it, as parents, just encourage them, ask them, point them to the right direction. And they would actually sometimes surprise us, surprising enough that they're motivated enough to go do it on their own. Just let them walk their path, but give them the direction, point them to the right direction. And that's, that's what we need to do as parents. So we're so grateful to have faculty like Ms. Queenie, Ms. Tisa, and obviously Ms. Abizo here to support us. Um, I think our children are gonna be very successful in this environment. All right, um, Ms. Abizo, do you see any more questions? No, uh, but I think our parents know where to go and where to send their kids and this will be online. And I have no doubt that more questions will pop up over, over time. Yep, just shoot me an email, Miss T. Second email. We always, you know, welcome both, you know, student and parent. But definitely encourage a student to to you know be be confident and and, and network and ask questions. Yep. Well, with that said, I thank you so much for the presentation panelists, and I think we can wrap this up. And uh, we're gonna give you back thirty minutes. Oh, by the way, I just want to make a quick announcement. We will not have a meeting in December. We won't have a PTSO meeting in December. The next one will be January 25th. And we are aiming to have in-person PTSO meeting in school. Please look for the detail from our weekly newspaper, whether it's from Ms. Abizo or from the PTO uh, organization. We'll look forward to seeing you in person again in January. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.